So we're going to talk about the TCA cycle. TCA stands for tricarboxylic acid. It's also known as the Krebs cycle, but most of the modern literature is calling it the TCA cycle. The TCA cycle is an amphibolic amphibolic pathway. And what that means is that it can be used as a pathway to break down intermediates of fatty acids, amino acids, and glucose. That's glucose. And it can also be used to synthesize synthesize fatty acids and amino acids and gluconeogenesis or glucose depending on exactly what intermediate step of the TCA cycle you move into. Now keep in mind from the last video I did that fatty acids come in as acetyl, they go directly into acetyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA cannot become glucose but other intermediates uh, certainly could. And just to flesh that out a little bit uh, up here we can see we have acetyl-CoA, uh, fatty acid would become acetyl-CoA, and then it would combine with oxaloacetate to become citrate. So look what we see, we have two carbons here, and we have four carbons here. So then we get the five, six carbons of citrate. So we have all six of these carbons have become citrate, which on its way back through the cycle, it gives up one carbon here and it gives up one carbon here. So these two carbons have now been taken away. They're gone. So you can't use this to produce a fatty acid because the carbons that it may that it provides always become CO2. Now with that said, uh, I mentioned that the TCA cycle is an intermediate for fatty acid synthesis. It's an intermediate for amino acid synthesis and gluconeogenesis, but primary purpose of the TCA cycle is to provide reducing equivalents. Reducing equivalents. And the reducing equivalents can, are NADH and FADH2. And these provide electrons to the electron transport system. It's also important to note that in addition to these reducing equivalents, NADH, FADH2, and NADH up here, we also get one molecule of GTP. Now GTP is uh, basically an equivalent to ATP. They can be interconverted pretty easily. They're both uh, purines, which means that they have a ribose sugar, some phosphates, phosphates, and they have a two ring base. So the two ring base is what makes them the purines. And they're both pretty easily interconverted for different jobs and their their both main purpose is the production of energy. So when you see GTP you can also think of it as ATP. It provides a high energy phosphate that powers other processes in the cell.